whenever we think of this crop and how it all started back in the fall, uh, we had a few rainfall showers in mid-September and early October. Uh, mid-September in western Kansas that got uh, farmers to plant the crop relatively early out there, but to get a good emergence and a good fall development. Central Kansas, we had scattered showers throughout October, especially in the early part of the month, and the crop got off to a good start as well. However, uh, those warmer temperatures that we had in the fall actually led to quite a bit of crop development and that crop that is more developed and with a bigger growth, it actually uses much more water. And that was combined with below average uh, rainfall for most of the remaining of the fall, winter and early spring. So actually today uh, in Kansas we have a crop that was relatively large because of the good fall growth that it had uh, and very limited moisture. Especially out in western Kansas where really since last September we haven't had much rainfall to really get the crop up and going. So drought stress is one uh, predominant talk uh, of the Kansas winter wheat crop during the 2022 uh, winter wheat growing season uh, and more recently now uh, in the first couple of weeks of April we actually had several freeze events. Now, you look at the crop behind me here, it's actually upright tillers and getting to the stem elongation. Uh, th this is the condition of the crop in most of northwest Kansas, uh, north central and northwest Kansas. As we go down to south central Kansas, the crop is further along. It's very common for us to walk into a field and already see a first node and even a second node. So very soon, perhaps a flag leaf emergence starting in some of the fields in south central Kansas. Uh, under these conditions, the closer the crop is to flag leaf emergence and flower, the more sensitive it will be to freezing conditions uh, and during uh, these first two weeks of April here we had several instances where uh, temperatures got below uh, 24 degrees Fahrenheit which is around the, the threshold where the crop can stand at these uh, jointing stages of growth more or less. In fact parts of western Kansas got down to 10 Fahrenheit right so definitely cold enough temperatures that could cause some uh, damage to the winter wheat crop. Especially concerned we are in, with uh, southwest Kansas uh, because in southwest Kansas the crop was further along perhaps in that first node, second node uh, of development and temperatures got to about 17 or 18 degrees Fahrenheit and they were actually below 24 uh, Fahrenheit for as many as seven hours or so. So really a large number of hours where temperatures got to uh, levels where damage can occur from freeze. So uh, the next couple of weeks here are going to be crucial for growers to understand the level of damage the crop went through. But what we advise growers is uh, once the crop has a little bit of temperature to start growing again, that we go out and we split some stems and we look for that developing head. If that developing head is turgid and nice and firm and, and, and white, then it's a, good, uh, it's a very good indication that the crop is alive and chances are that it's going to still keep go, uh, going through development. However, if it's kind of brown and mushy and, and, and soft, uh, then it's an indication that at least that tiller may have been lost. So those are some of the conditions that the crop has been facing so far. Um, widespread drought concerns uh, in the majority of the state and more recently here uh, potential for freeze damage with special concern in southwest Kansas but in parts of central Kansas as well especially where the crop was further along.